So I'm a big believer in medicine and surgery, especially the best thing we can do is find somebody who does something better than us and steal relentlessly. So, are there any communities within medicine you think have made really good strides in this regard, and what can we learn from that? Um, it's interesting. Um, medicine has all these little weird and wonderful tribes. And it's some of our greatest strength because it creates diversity of thought and our greatest weakness, right? Because everyone knows what an orthopod is. Everyone knows what an intensive care doctor is like. Everyone knows what a pediatrician behaves like. So interestingly, for example, the anesthetists have done amazing work around fatigue. And they've done amazing work around wellness and burnout. But they have other problems. Uh, if I'm honest, Orthopedics is widely being seen as leading the way in terms of a lot of the culture change stuff because we were perceived to have the biggest problem, right? If you ask most people who the biggest assholes in the hospital were, everyone was like, well, I don't want to say it, but it's those guys. Um, uh, if you look at other specialties, because actually, statistically, the, the worst were obstetrics and gynecology um, because they have all the problems we have with hierarchy, but they have another hierarchy because they have to work with midwives. And so they have all the doctor stuff, all the nurse stuff, and then the doctor nurse stuff. And they've made huge leaps and bounds in trying to challenge that sort of stuff. Again, psychiatry have done huge swathes of work around unconscious bias, which is a whole other talk in itself, but, but absolutely fascinating. The biggest problem is, again, it comes back to my earlier thing about how irrational we are and how defensive people get because it feels like a challenge. So the, the great example is actually from the stuff we're learning from outside of medicine. Now. There are certain things we can learn from aviation that work. There are other things that are fucking stupid, right? Because we don't work in planes, right? My flight got canceled because one of the staff was late, so they canceled the flight. Imagine if you canceled a day in theater because the SHO was on the ward round. Right, we're not, we're not even starting. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not gonna happen, right? Um, on the other hand, they do something called sterile cockpit that works really well. So sterile cockpit is where you say, um, I'm just going to do a really tense bit of, in this case, flying. For us, it would be an operation. So for the next 10 minutes, I just need quiet. Can someone turn the music down? And unless it's important, no talking. You do your thing. You finish the thing. Cool. Someone can turn the music back up again. <sighs> right. It's great. So they do it. They say sterile cockpit. And for that time, everyone focuses and then everyone relaxes again, right? Same with the military and their culture of debriefing. So they have three different levels of debriefing. They do what's called a hot debrief. So uh, we are at a crash call and the patient dies. And it's shit. And we go, okay, cool. Uh, hot debrief. How's everyone doing? You okay? Okay. Uh, you look a bit shaky. Go, go get a, a coffee and a chocolate bar. You okay? Yeah, okay. And then a little bit later, you do, and by a little bit, I mean a couple of days later, you do another debrief. Now everyone has had the time to think about it. And then up to two weeks later, you do a true debrief with, they used to call it lessons learned and they changed it because they recognized that they weren't really learning. So it was more like lessons identified. When everyone's just cold light of day, right. So actually what did happen there? And doesn't that sound great? Like a way of really learning from everything. But again, that took ages. I'm, I'm doing a project at the moment, so for those of you who do follow me on, on Instagram or Twitter, when I'm not doing this shit, I basically eat nice food. Um, so I am currently doing a project where I'm interviewing Michelin star chefs about how they run effective teams. And some of the stuff they talk about in terms of, uh, I interviewed one chef recently, it's not been published yet, but I'm not gonna give anything away. Um, just talked about how um, people aren't allowed in work on their days off, he won't allow it. He's like, I expect you to give me literally 100% from the moment your shift starts to the moment your shift ends. But outside of that, I don't want to see you at work. There is no place for it. Right? Uh, kitchens have family meals, right? So everyone from the porter to the head chef sits down and they have food. Now, in surgery, we go, well, back in my day, we had the firm system, you had the boss, the registrar, the SHO, the house officer, which to me sounds a little bit hierarchical and can't exist anymore in shift work. It doesn't, it, it can't be done. The, sh the firm is dead. But loads of other industries have departments and you can still create a culture of welcome to the team 
without it being, you belong to me. So actually, not only are there lots of lessons that we can learn from within other bits of medicine, but actually I think we need to get over our, our kind of nostalgia imperfecta and, and look at other professions, but not in that way that a lot of people do, in, again, in that kind of very absolutist preachy way. We need to be more like aviation. So I, I spoke to a pilot and he said, um, the thing is, if I screw up, everyone on the plane dies, including me. So imagine if every complication a surgeon had was visited on them. So for every infection I cause, I get an infection. Think I would change how I operate? You're damn right I would. I'd be like, no, you scrub up again. And I've seen you scrub up, you're not even coming in. And uh, do we have all the kit I want for this arthroplasty? No, well then I'm not doing it. I'm out, absolutely not. Because every time my patient's hip dislocates, my hip dislocates. I'm like, nope, 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 right? So it's a completely different attitude and we have to recognize that. But there are things we can take. And plagiarism is the highest form of flattery. Like if it's a good idea, just, just steal it and then reference it. And then it's not plagiarism.